Hey, Comfort Killers, I, I want to tell you a quick story today about my fear, my biggest fear, um, and when I faced it head on, what happened, okay? So first of all, I experienced uh, a fear in a plane, in a plane from Philadelphia to Albany. It was a regional flight, very quick flight, but it was a propeller plane, one of those smaller planes. United hosted it. United had me in their plane, and uh, it was like a 20-seater sitting next to a, a lady there and um you know there's a few people in the plane it wasn't packed at all but it was 20 seats and you know i introduced myself to the flight attendant and said hey you know i'm i'm stacy a cross and and you know i work with and at that time i was working with jet blue one of the airlines and you know we have like a little code you know when you work with the airline you kind of mention it and kind of you know have a little small talk it's just common courtesy but i was thanking them for the quick flight up to albany I sat in my chair and I'm looking out the window. I see the prop and I was like, man, I don't really like uh, these propeller planes. So that's the first thing that I did was already putting something negative in the air. Like, I don't like this plane. I already had that in there. I already had this seed of fear that I just now cultivated by saying that. I looked out the window. Wow, well, yeah, I don't really like flying in these little baby ass planes is what I said. And uh, so... It's so small, you could actually go and touch the pilot's neck, give him a back rub from your seat because it's a small jet. And so, you know, we took off and, you know, I'm feeling the whole, these dips. And I'm like, what the, f what is going on with these dips? I don't like them. I'm hearing all these sounds that I, you never hear in a bigger aircraft because things are secured. Like the wing is out there. <laughs> like, okay, the wing is out there. The engine's over here under the wing and in the back, you know? So I was like, what are these sounds? I am scared. I'm starting to get scared now. I'm so scared. The lady beside me, she's scared. I in, in a plain eyes view, I see a man and he's he has his head down. And I'm like, what, really, what's going on? Usually when you're on a plane, you're you're minding your own business, right? You're on your iPad, you're you're reading, you're writing, you're doing whatever to pass the time. But this time we were all like, you know, some people heads were down, people were like, you know, looking out the window, where are we? But the dips dropping at least 500 feet, shoom. And, oh my God, I'm thinking about it now, and I'm like, whoa, you know? We were scared. I personally thought that that would have been my last day in the air on Earth. <laughs> you know, my last day on Earth, because I was going to, that plane was bound to crash and go somewhere off in some water or some land because w how could we survive up here with all these rickety sounds this plane sounds like it's going to break down in the air the propellers are going to stop the engines are going to stop and guess what we're we're like this the plane is like you know oh my god i tucked my badge in my in my shirt because i was like I can't help nobody, okay? I, you, I I can't help nobody. I looked at the lady. She looked at me. She was like, "Oh my God!" I said, "I, I said, oh my God!" I, I, we could we could have a bigger. Oh my God! We having a contest now to see who's more scared. I'm afraid, lady. I am afraid. The guy got gets up and he throws up. I I see the throw up. He lets it loose because it's too much. People are going crazy in this jet. The flight attendant made her way to me because, you know, we introduced ourselves. So she made her way to me. She said, you know, what's wrong? And I was like, what, what, what do you mean? I, what, the plane is like dip. The plane's dropping. I don't know how many feet in altitude that we're losing each time this dip, the sound. What do you mean? What do you mean? What is wrong? I am scared. And, and we used to say shitting bricks. I am shitting bricks because I'm scared this much. So we finally made it. I did signs of cross, Allah, God, spiritual, chakra, Buddha, everybody, okay? Muhammad, everybody I was thinking when this plane landed. It was so bad of a flight that I didn't fly back from Albany to Philadelphia. No, no, no. <laughs> that would be just to, you know, moving into my fear. Nah, I didn't learn my lesson till afterwards. It was New Year's Eve. I came back to Philadelphia via Amtrak, the train, and I took a commuter's train all the way from Albany, stopped off in Manhattan, 
okay? Stopped off at Madison Square, Penn Station, and took another train all the way to Philadelphia. Now, how much time did I waste? Lots. Because I was scared of a 45 minute, uh, hour flight. I was scared of an hour flight, right? So I took a all day train and that's what fear does. Fear allows you to waste time, okay? Fear puts you in a place where you're making decisions that go against some logic, go against some rational things. Like, hey, you, you rather be in the train for 16 hours then, then go take an hour flight because why? You're scared of a, f a hour flight because you're you thinking this thing is gonna this thing is gonna crash. Okay, I was scared. I get back to Philadelphia and I was thinking about it and I wrote it in my journal and I was like, oh my God, how can I get so afraid um, that I'm over here thinking that I will not even take another plane again? How could I get so fearful that I believe that, you know, my life was coming to this end and I placed all these imaginary things like the plane didn't crash, the propellers worked, the, the, the flight, the flight attendant was like, Hey, listen, this is what it is. This is a, this is a baby jet, man. We, we're up against some wind here. This is all it is. And these pilots are trained. How can I be scared so much that I am able to not just put the facts in front of my face and say, okay, let's let's go with it. I gotta get to this place, let's do it. Because fear, when fear comes, when fear, when you have experienced fear, you start thinking way irrational, okay? You start thinking things like, that aren't even there yet. You start putting uh, imagination and you start saying some end result that didn't even happen yet and not going to happen. And you start putting the worst things in front of your face. Why? Because you're scared and you need comfort. So fear allows you to go back into comfort. You know what's comfortable? Taking a train for all them damn hours and they're like, You know, that's all I was sitting on a train. Um, I needed to really get back home and get to work, but I sat on the train. But here's the deal. Um, I come home. I come home. And I was like, no, this is too much. So I ended up taking flying lessons. Because I said, what if I'm in control? What, Stacy? what if I'm in control? If I'm in control, I'm able to change fear. Right? If I go into, if I move into fear, am I able to change the outcome here? And I say, yeah, let me try that. So I took flying lessons. Of course, I waited on the most perfect day to do it. No wind, no, not a cloud in the sky. Right? But it was still, I still felt it. I still felt the same fear. I still felt the same feeling. It was still a small, it was an even smaller plane. It was a Cessna. And I went in there and of course I had a co-pilot the you know i had a licensed instructor but um but i was in control and i felt it and we took the dips we took the drops and we flew to the left we flew to the right and i handled the yoke and i landed the plane and i took off the plane and i brought it up and, and it felt great it felt great because i wasn't paralyzed by this fear going into planes or experiencing life at a different time and being stuck. And that's what fear does. It keeps you stuck. So if you are stuck like Chuck and you're ready to give up. No, if you are stuck and you're ready to take on a new life, just visit the comfortkillers.com. This is what it's about. It's about moving outside of your comfort zone, really experiencing life, really putting fear beside behind you. Here's the thing. You're going to have fear. I love when people say, yo, I'm fearless. No, you ain't. Shut up. You're not fearless, okay? Because I know that you're not fearless. We have fear. We're humans, okay? So we have to work within this, this, this emotion. And who says that this emotion can control us? Who says it? That emotion is controlling you because you're allowing it to control you. But it doesn't have to. We can move into our fear. We can experience life at higher levels. We can raise our consciousness. We raise our self-awareness. We can live life beautifully and expand within it, have bigger goals, bigger dreams, bigger ambition, bigger drive, and go out there and handle our own, wake up with this burst for life, this burst of energy, and we can really go crush it. But first, we got to minimize fear down to its correct parameters. Because we have it out here. 
And it's causing us to not take a single action. But when we micro this thing, when we when we push this thing, it's a pea-sized thing now. We just keep going because fear just lessens. It minimizes. And then you can use it for when you really need it. And I'm not saying you're going to ever really need it, but that's what it's for. All right, I am Stacey A. Cross. There's no E in my name, thecomfortkillers.com.